Okay, so welcome back. Uh, this is hopefully going to be the last part of the video. Uh, I know it's overrunning for such a short thing inside of a system, but you know, it's uh, best to explain everything as best as possible. Okay, so now what we want to do is once we have this successful um, uh, form filled out and the form's been submitted and there's no errors, we need to go ahead and we need to construct an array, much like we did in register. Uh, let me just scroll down here, called register data. Uh, so in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, in fact, I won't copy it. I'll, I'll do I'll do this as as it is. But I'm going to call this update data, and this is going to be equal to an array. So the first key is going to be equal to something, and that is first underscore name. What's this going to be equal to? Well, dollar underscore post first name. I can comma separate this now. Come down to a new line another new line just to save a bit of time this is going to be last name this is going to be last name this is going to be email and this here is obviously going to be email so let me just tidy this up uh, very slightly okay so we're creating an array called update data and this is going to be passed through to an update function it's going to send these field names so like these must correspond to what's in the database and this is the actual data here so if I go ahead and print our update data and I uh, click update um, there's no errors obviously so we're now printing out this array so we've got first name Billy, last name Gara, email equals Billy at phpacademy.org so that data will be then sent through to the database. I know it's the same as what we've already got but we're just going to update everything when the user clicks update. There's not much of a speed difference if we you know, if we were to go through and check whether something had changed. It's a long and tedious and actually slower process. Okay so now that we've done that we need to pass this data through to the update user function which we haven't created yet so we'll have to do that. So we'll pass this update data uh, variable, which is an array. We'll then redirect the user to a specific location, which is going to be this page, so settings.php, with success on the end. We've already looked at this as well. And then we're just going to exit here. OK, so now what we want to do is we want to incorporate this success message. We don't want to update this just yet. We'll leave that till last because it's slightly more complicated. Um, so when the user updates their details successfully, now watch this, updates, you'll see the success has bobbed on the end here. We need to uh, sort of catch this and then not show this form and show a little error me uh, a success message instead. So here I'm going to say if something, do something. So if um, empty dollar underscore gets this time, so we're getting this get variable called success. If that is equal to false, i.e. it exists, and um, oh sorry no if is set so if it's set is equal to true and empty dollar underscore get success is equal to true and if we look back at our register page we um, did this here well I didn't say is equal to true or is equal to false but these this isn't really required because this will return f uh, true or false this will return you know true or false uh, anyway um, if that's the case then we want to go ahead and just output a message so I'm going to say echo your details have been updated um, otherwise what do we want to do well we want to do all of this here all of the form and we want to end the closing bracket there so that means we can go ahead and we can just nicely indent all of that there okay so if this success message is set all we want to do is that otherwise we want to do all of this and then we end that there and that's the ending part of that block you can see it's highlighted red if we go all the way up this is the start of it here so let's go ahead and test that and hit enter where we've got this success thing on the end of our URL and it says your details have been updated they haven't been updated this is just our success page so when I click update, that updates our, well, it hasn't updated yet, but that says we've updated our details. Otherwise, if we don't include the relevant information, we get this error. Okay, so now let's go ahead and focus on this update user function, which I commented out there so it didn't 
we didn't return an error. Uh, we need to go ahead and build this update user function. So let's go ahead and update, uh, sorry, open our core functions users file with all of our functions to do with our user in. And let's go ahead and I'm literally going to take this registration function here, register user, and I'm going to paste it here. Get rid of that space. So the reason I've pasted it is because a lot, of, not a lot of this actually, uh, a lot of it doesn't isn't required, but um, it's it's relatively similar, so it's just going to save a bit of time. So obviously this is called update user, and we're sending update data. We need to walk through the array and sanitize each value. That's important, so we need to keep that in there. We don't need to encrypt any passwords. We're not using this method of grabbing fields and we don't need to email the user. The query is going to remain uh, here but it's going to be a different query. So here we are you know pretty much starting from scratch. I didn't really save that much time by copying it. Okay so what do we want to do here? Well I'm going to create a new array uh, called update and this is going to hold the structure of the query that we're, we're going to use to update the user. Now I'll just quickly go through how a, a query looks when we want to update some data. So I'm going to hop over to my database and I'm going to update this username, um, oh no, I'm going to update this first name here um, to Billy or William or something like that. So that's where the user ID is equal to 14. So I'm going to click on my SQL tab and here I'm going to say update and this is the syntax for updating values. I'm going to say update users which is my table. I'm going to say set uh, what was it? First name is equal to William. In fact, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to update more than one uh, field because that's what we're going to be doing in this case. I use a comma and then I don't say set again, but this time I use the field name again. So I'm going to say last name is equal to, and we'll just say something like Smith. Okay. And we're going to say where user ID is equal to 14. Now, this might be confusing, but let me just go over it. We're updating this field, uh, this table here, which is users, contains all our users. We're setting this field to this value, and then we're setting this field to this value, but only where the user ID is equal to 14. Let's just click go. Uh, it says one row affected. Let's go ahead and browse William Smith. Okay, so it's updated this data. Uh, let's just go ahead and change that back but that's essentially just a, a sneak peek of what we're going to be doing here so what we need to do is we need to when this data is passed in this update data array we need to uh, put it into a string that we can pass through to a query so I'm going to create a uh, an array up here so update equals array and then what we want to do is we want to loop through uh, this update data that we've passed through so let's just get rid of register uh, we need to loop through all of these. So first name will be the, in the first loop, last name, and then email. So for each update data as field data, oops, got the uh, dollar sign. So for every item we want to loop through, we want to append something onto this update uh, array. And what do we want to append on? Well, we're obviously appending on field is equal to data okay I need to escape these two characters here by the way uh, so field equals data so all we need to do is replace this in here and I'm concatenating on here field data okay so we're starting the string here um, a little back tick the field and then end the back tick is equal to single quote data and single quote so now what I'm going to do is print r update and then I'm going to kill the script so let's go ahead and click update um, ah we're not seeing it because we're not calling the function let's go ahead and do that update uh, array walk expects parameter 1 to be array null given Okay, so let's uh, see what might have gone wrong there. Ah, there we go. We didn't change that to update data. Fair enough. Refresh, update. 
Okay, so now we've got array first name equal to Billy. So we've got this, this it looks odd, but we've got essentially field equals Billy, last name equals Garrett. So we've, we're, we're starting to bring together the structure of our query. Now, how do I get this into a string form? Well, I can just go ahead and I can use implode. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that, but I'll do that within my query. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Bring this MySQL query up here. We don't need any of this because we're not inserting any data. We're updating users. And usually we'd say set blah equals blah, but we don't need to do that. We need to implode this update um, array to make it into a string and join everything together and separate each set thing by commas, if that makes sense. Um, in fact, let me just go ahead and, and kill the script here and um, echo implode um, update. So this is our uh, this is our uh, array that we're imploding by, and what we're imploding by a comma. So now what's going to happen is this is going to be each each of these. So this this and this is going to be now separated by a comma, which is exactly what we want. So when I click update, we've got first name equals Billy, comma, last name equals Garrett, comma, email equals Billy at phpacademy.org. Perfect, that's what we want. So we now know that when we can we can do that within our query to sort of reconstruct this um, format. So I'm going to say set, I'm going to uh, concatenate, implode, um, update, and I'm going to implode that by a comma and a space, where user ID is equal to dollar underscore session user ID. Unless we have a variable stored for that already, let me just go ahead and check. Uh, yeah, we have session underscore user ID. So I can go ahead and instead of using the actual session, paste that in there. Perfect. So now this query will be executed. We've already seen the result of this uh, this implode here, uh, and it will update them specific fields where the user ID is equal to the currently logged in user. So let's go ahead and try and update some details and see what result we get. So I'm going to change the first name here to William. I'm going to click update. Your details have been updated. Well, let's go ahead and click home. Nothing's happened. This I would have expected to, to have changed. So uh, let's just go over to our database and again, nothing's changed. So why hasn't this changed? Well, we need to go ahead and debug. Uh, you may have seen the error, but I haven't. So or die on the end of this and I'm going to be using MySQL error. Now what this is going to do is um, if this query fails to execute properly uh, or it fails to run, MySQL will return an error. And this error can be picked up using this MySQL error function. And what we can do with this is we can kill the script if this uh, fails and then or die and then output the result of the error. So let's go ahead to settings. Uh, I'm going to change this again to William. And clicking update will now show us um, a, um, an error. <clears throat> so the first thing is undefined variable session user ID. Um, so that's session user ID there. Session user ID is equal to session user ID. So this is um, you have an error in your content. Okay, so I think the best thing to do here um, would be to. Um, I think this is because of global. Yeah, this will be because of global sort of variables. If I go ahead here and say global session user ID I'm going to go ahead and refresh this oh it's worked oh okay there we go all right so uh, okay the problem here was then uh, this variable um, is not being able to be accessed within this function because it's not global so we can't access this uh, variable within our function so we have um, a couple of options we can do this which is slightly slower well not yeah, very slightly slower, or we can just declare this as uh, an actual session. So dollar underscore session user ID like that. Now it's entirely up to you. Um, doing it this way with a global will mean that if you ever need to change this for any reason here, uh, it will make it a lot easier. So I'll go ahead and leave that as it is now. 
um, but just a couple of worse warnings slightly slower anyway now uh, the data has been updated so perfect um, so when I go ahead and, and type in say William Smith and I go ahead and click update um, everything's updated go back to settings it's changed change this back to Billy Garrett click update this changes here and settings have been details have been updated okay so um, a bit of debugging there uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that or die now because we don't need it uh, but the reason the query failed was because uh, the session user ID variable wasn't being able to be picked up and therefore um, this was obviously just blank okay so what we've done now is we've successfully allowed the user to update their settings if you needed to add more fields here it's extremely simple you just go ahead uh, you don't need to do anything in here all you need to do is you need to obviously add more fields and you need to add this stuff in here uh, making sure obviously you do your validation and uh, you define which fields you are, are actually requiring to be entered or, or um, submitted by the user